All right, this week on Study Ball, I want to take a look at one of the best stories to me in the NFL at the quarterback position a year ago, and that was Geno Smith. Kind of a journeyman, uh, you know, after his stint with the Jets, and a lot of people just felt like he was a career backup. Finally gets his opportunity to play and plays extremely well. Plays really, really well last year. And you sit back and you kind of scratch your head and go, okay, why did he play so well last year when he struggled so much throughout his career? I think he found a system that fit him very, very well. Uh, I think he matured. Got a chance to cover one of his games and sit down with him and just to talk to him and see the maturity. I think that went a long way. And then technique-wise, uh, I thought his accuracy was so good, really across the field, not just on shorter intermediate throws, but down the field as well. His accuracy was so good. And a lot of that has to do with his technique, his base, keeping his feet apart, uh, keeping those shoulders balanced. And so I think he's grown in a lot of different areas from the time he came into the league to where he was last year. Now he gets the big deal. And now the questions are going to be there is can he repeat? Can he do this again? And we're going to take a look uh, this week at the playoff game against San Francisco because that's going to be the real test, right? In their division, being able to beat the San Francisco 49ers, that really, really good defense, kind of dethrone them and see if they can take another step from where they were last year. Okay, so here we go, and we talked about it was going to be against San Francisco in their playoff game last year. All right, so bringing all out pressure here. Okay, so what San Francisco is going to do, they're going to bring pressure, pressure, walk up, pop out. Okay, so a couple different options going to have the one-on-one -on -one slant back here. Never a bad option because you see them voiding this. They're also running a stick concept over here. So depending on where he felt the pressure uh, was coming from, where the free guy was, which actually is the backside guy right here, he could hit this hot to this side or he could stay back here and hit it to the backside. And we're going to see here that he decides to go to the backside. Nice little step up here. Find that window. Puts the ball on his guy on the backside. Really, really good decision. He gets pressure. Okay, he moves. Maybe doesn't have to move here, but steps up in the pocket, sees a void, makes a nice throw on the run. Okay, another nice decision right here. I'm going to go with the empty set. I like the empty set as a way to, to beat the 49ers defense. They're so good. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to run kind of the choice concept right here with Lockett, okay? And on the other side, we're going to run the one step, we're going to run a return, and then we're going to have what we call a stump, a stick pump right here. So we really have options if we're Geno on the back side or the front side, okay? So I come out, we got this stump, we're trying to hit this against what we call middle open. That's where the hole is in the middle of the defense. Fred Warner gets depth right there. So once he gets depth, I'm kind of Xing that out right there. So options from this point, once I X that out, is I can go here to here off of this defender if I want, or I can come read this backside, knowing Fred Warner turned to the front side and really go choice to this in over the top, like this choice route here by Tyler. Here's what I like. I like the fact that he's attacking one of them. So he's attacking the outside guy. Again, holding inside leverage because he knows he's going to hook. But attack the outside guy and hook. Keep yourself away from this inside defender. If that inside defender comes and matches to you, that's when we get the throw up over the top. So I like the way that they're running this here. Nice timing and throw by Gino. Boom. Hits the back foot. Balls out of his hands. Nice completion. Protects his guy. Okay, so this particular play, we're going to go with common play here, corner route, stick flat, looks like on the back side, we're going to run a hook and an in. Okay, so options here. 
First thing, this route down here, not my favorite route. I don't like the corner route on it. I'd rather them put something going to the inside. And why do I say that? Because to me, this is a corner off play. So when this corner's off here, I wanna isolate the outside linebacker first. He covers flat, I hit the hook. He holds off the hook, I hit the flat. But I have to worry about the next guy that's in the mix. So the next guy that's in the mix is Fred Warner here. So with us going hook, oh, sorry, hook flat corner, okay? Outside backer can cover the flat, Fred Warner can cover the hook, and then this corner's back here to be able to cover the corner as opposed to putting something here or something back inside where Fred Warner wants to push out, we can recover back to the inside, so we're working numbers, all right? The other thing that we notice here with San Francisco is, look at this, ball's right here. So they actually have what we call a pushed cover three. They've got three linebackers over to the strong side here. So we can read it out the front side as Gino does, or we can say to ourselves, okay, one defender underneath on the back side, I know I've got an in with some sort of a hook. I can read this guy knowing that I'm gonna get a two on one on the back side. So let's look front side first at what Gino does. Okay, so you see it, reading that defender, that defender holds off that hook there. Nice job, get to the flat, maybe just a tick quicker, tick quicker to the flat. I wanna come out and read the flat first. So see it right there, maybe get it out, but I like the decision. Good decision right there based on what we're seeing front side. Boom, go get yourself a completion. Now I want you to look back side, okay? Look back side, right? You look back side, this guy comes down and matches to the hook. I'd like to see this have a little bit more width here, but you see the possible throw there to the back side if you want it right there, outside the hash, be on the money for that throw or be on the time for that throw. Got a nice little window there, but either way, works on this particular play, but just kind of reading those linebackers and seeing the overplay. All right, looks like San Francisco is gonna play a cover three here. The last second, they roll out to their typical coverage, which is kind of a catch four, quarter safety, quarter safety. These guys kind of read it, could fall back or roll up based on what they're seeing in front of them. Okay, so this was a, Favorite play of Seattle, just starts with this and out and a go, trying to hold that uh, corner off there and believe that Tyler Lockett against a linebacker is a matchup that will take all day long. And then from there, they run this shallow and in, so you can kind of read this backside and then recover in side from there. So. Nice decision right here. And again, I want you to just watch the technique of Gino here as he gets to the top of his drop. See, there's what I'm talking about. Nice balance with his feet. His feet don't come together. He's balanced up. Quick little movement in motion. Not a lot of movement with his body. One of the reasons why he made a huge jump in terms of accuracy last year. Good decision. Reading the corner. He shuffles deep. Boom. Get the ball out on time. Get yourself a first down. Coming off the play action here. Really running a naked bootleg. So what do we know on naked bootlegs? Block down, got somebody in the flat, somebody running back to this area, whether it's a comeback or a corner. We got the crosser, and then we probably have a late trail right here, but always coming out and trying to hit the flat right now. Come off the naked, nice job turning his hips. Get the flat, get the flat right now, take it. Don't pass it up, enough space right there. We'll take five yards on a naked because what are we trying to do on a naked? We're not trying to get the big play, We're trying to get these guys to just hold with the run fits. We're trying to slow them down with the run fits by giving a play fake and then coming out the backside. So this is exactly what we wanna to try to do on a naked, get the ball out, get our five yards just as if we're handing the football off, but make those linebackers think and hesitate when we do hand the football off. Okay, so off of the hard play action, 
Okay, lots of different things that we can do. A lot of people will run the post with the over and with the, uh, the shallow coming. Okay, in this particular case, they ran DK on a seven pump, kind of the same thing. So we're looking here first, and then we're coming to our high low over the top. Got pressure coming off the edge from the safety here. Play action, nice job stepping up. Okay, nice job stepping up there. Now, if he could just step up and be a little bit more balanced there, I think he has a chance. Step up. See, he kind of turns his hips there, and I get it. A little bit of pressure right there because he had to step up hard because of this. But there's a window here to throw this out by the numbers if he's got a chance to kind of settle in. But still not a horrible decision. Avoids that pressure and just throws the football away right here. Sometimes the best play is a throwaway. I can live with that. Trying to take a shot. Shot's not there as you want it to be. It's okay to live for another down. All right. So we're going to come out here. We're going to run what we call 73. So it's a 7, which is a corner. 3, we also call it out, otter out with the corner, and then they're going to run a stick off of that, okay? So we're going to read the corner first. In this particular case, corner stays down in a cover two look, so we don't have the out looking for the corner, but this safety has already got width, so we don't have chance from leverage standpoint, but here's the void in the defense. Again, just want you to see how quickly Gino's making decisions, understands his reads, he's reading outside in. Boom, there's the window, he's balanced up, no wasted movement, ball's out, another accurate throw in between the zone. With the hard play action again, and here, back to what we were talking about before, right? So what are we running? The hook, the corner, and the flat. What did we say the problem was? Fred Warner likes to push through this and understands uh, what he likes to see in certain situations, especially when the backs are going to the flat. So he's going to push through to the hook. He's going to push through to the flat. He's going to sit back there. Another occasion where, to me, this becomes a better play if we go hook, hook, flat, based on when we're trying to throw this and what we're trying to accomplish. If, right, if they still push through here, here, and this guy pushes to that, this is where we have the in on the backside that we can work to. But just, it's a typical concept that you see all through the league. I don't really know why people like the corner route on there. It's really only good against man-to-man -man coverage, but you see the problems that it creates right here. Covered. Covered, covered. Gino has nothing, plus he's got Bosa in his face. But nice job being able to avoid right here. And again, sometimes the best play is a throwaway, avoids the sack. Not a good you know, play call or, or not a good execution there based on what San Francisco was doing. So nice job. Just, hey, I'm living for another day. I'm throwing the football away. Okay, so here, I'm not a big fan of double slants on both sides. I like it on one side or the other, but some teams will do it on both sides. It makes it tough because you don't really know where to put your back here because your back is usually going to take an extra guy to the mix. And so with that being the case, now you've got two guys in one area, one guy that can take away two, and you give the numbers back to the defense. That's why I don't really like double slants. Um, so because the back's going to the right, you're almost forced in a particular look like this where San Francisco goes back to a two high. You're almost forced to go to the left-hand side. Okay, you go to the left-hand side. We're going to read the inside defender right there. He squeezes. Love it. You're right here to the outside slant. Gino's ready. He's on time. Boom. Nice ball. Good throw on the money. All right, now a lot of people might look at this and go, well, you got press up there. Why not go 
to the off slant over here, which would have been easier, and there's no question that it would have been, but I can almost guarantee you that the biggest problem is this guy right here, okay? Because we're sending him that way, if they did pass this off, I've got nothing to the front side. So as I said before, almost forced to go backside. It's why I don't like double slants. A lot of times you'll put a slant flat over to this side and then put the back there. So this is good when you've got just one defender over here that you can inside out him. And then this, this guy, you know, he, he's got to choose whether he wants to get to the slant or go to the check down and you should have an advantage to that side. But good decision here by Gino. Good, good timing, stick that back foot in the ground, be ready on time for the outside slant. Bang, we're rolling once again. Okay, so we've got a little empty set here and we're gonna run hitch, corner, hitch corner, so it's what we call double horn. Then we're gonna chip and give this guy a juke or a shallow route there. So what we really wanna do with this guy coming back that direction is if everything's equal, uh, I'd like to go to the top so I can read that and then this shallow comes into my vision. If I've got a better look down here on the bottom, go ahead and read that and just know you gotta work all the way back to the shallow. But the first thing I'm looking at, corner off, versus corner press. On this play, we want to take the hitch. So good job right here, recognizing the pre-snap. Boom, hit that back foot, get the ball out. Good throw right there. We're rocking and rolling, balls out of his hands. And you notice he's done a great job in this game of getting the ball out. So key against these guys, right? They're so good at rushing the passer. Guys on the back end are very disciplined. So you got to get the ball out quick. Gino's done a nice job in this game of getting the ball out quick. They've used play action to get their shots down the field so they can get some extra blockers. So here we go, off of the play action, hard play action. Gonna run down here, I don't know if this is a read or not, but it's gonna be a deep hook and a flat where we're gonna try to pull this guy out. Then we've got another hook over the ball. So we're really trying to get this one, that becomes our two, and then we can recover back to the inside here Again, nice job. He's coming out, he's getting set, one hitch, ball's out, right? Great coverage. Good coverage there on DK, guy's right on his back, but does a nice job coming back to the quarterback, and you see he gets Fred Warner to just turn a little bit to the inside. By getting him to turn to the inside, he sees that window, he understands that he's got an opportunity, and then he sticks the ball right on DK, Keep yourself between ball and man is what we tell receivers, and it's a great throw right at the back of the head of DK. Another 15-yard chunk play. A lot of nice plays and throws by Gino in this game. All right, so we basically got a quick out here, and then what we would call double seams off of that. And I don't know if this was supposed to be a quick out or not, but turns into a go because he's pressed. We get a one high safety. Okay, you got your choice. This corner is off, you could take the quick out. Okay, one high safety if you wanted to. You could work these two seams. Or because I got press man against my best go receiver on the bottom here in DK, if I can hold the safety back here to the middle or to the hash, then I've got a chance down here to my best receiver on a go route. Okay? What I don't like is I don't like that DK goes inside. Okay, it's really hard. As a quarterback, we're told on go routes, we're gonna hold the safety at the timing throw, we're gonna throw it four yards from the sideline. So we want our receiver to go outside and hold the defender inside so we can lay it outside. When we're trying to time that up and our receiver goes inside, he changes the landmark for us as a quarterback. So Gino here holds the safety. Nice job, one hitch, putting the ball out. Where's the ball at? Ball's four yards from the sideline. Okay, DK almost goes and gets it, but because he goes inside, it becomes a tough catch for him going to the outside. But to me, it's a really good throw by Gino. Doesn't understand he's going inside until he gets back there. Now he's got to try to just lay it up and they just miss that big time throw. All right, so there's the first part of the game tape and you're seeing a lot of really good things from Gino. Understanding what he needs to do 
in this game. It's not about holding the football and getting big plays against San Francisco. It's about getting the football out and getting first downs and then trying to finish drives. Did a really, really good job in this first piece. We'll pick it up from there in part number two.